Es Jesucristo el Salvador. Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're joining us for this online service. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. I am so excited about our special Christmas Eve service on campus at 7 p.m. We have gifts for the first 75 preschool and elementary kids will be here. I'll have them come up and join me on the platform as I sit in the rocking chair with my mug and read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. It is wonderful. It's one of my favorite traditions. Yes, I love those stories. Um, traditions that we have. I want to share a verse from James chapter 1 verse 17. It says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. You know, as we think about all the good things that God gives us, he gave us the greatest gift of all, and that was his son, Jesus. And I just want to remind you of the real reason why we celebrate Christmas, and that is the gift of Jesus. Absolutely. Jesus is, without a doubt, the greatest gift of all. And I know sometimes when kids read this, they're thinking, okay, Santa's flying his sleigh up above, and all the gifts are up there, and they're going to come to us. But the truth is, even Santa is rooted in Christianity and sharing our faith and sharing the goodness of God as St. Nicholas and so many others over the centuries have given gifts as a way of extending God's love. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Yes. Let's take a moment and pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. God, we thank you that you love us so much that you have given the very best for us, your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus that this Christmas we would turn our eyes toward you and put our hope in you as we share your love, your grace, and your goodness. Lord, I pray for our church family today. God, I just pray your blessing over them this Christmas season. God, may they just grow in their faith in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as we talk about good and perfect gifts, it's hard for me not to think about my goofy sneakers and my goofy <laughs> hoodie and my goofy watch and other great things like that that people have given me because they love me. And nothing seems to compare with the love of Jesus, no matter how good and goofy it is. In case you were wondering what to get me, go for goofy, always a win. Well, let's take a few <laughs> minutes and worship together, shall we? Oh 
control And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing that you're worthy of it all You're worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things For you deserve the glory Jesucristo el Salvador Christ the Savior Nació en Navidad Christmas Day Whether it feels like Christmas just snuck up on you or you've been waiting for this moment Christmas Eve is finally here The skit guys help us imagine what it was like for the magi or wise men after they encountered the newborn Jesus what child is this who lay to rest On Mary's lap is sleeping mm -hmm. We can't go back. Not this way. But this is the way that we came. I know. And it will take us directly to Herod. Just as he asked us to do. No, won't do it. We've got to protect this child. Protect him? From whom? We all observed Herod's reaction when we told him of our intentions to go visit this newborn messiah. He told us to return to him to report what we saw. That's what we're doing. It is the way that he wanted information, assuring us that he was going to worship this newborn king. And did you see his eyes? Did you see Herod's eyes? Mm. They were dead. He's not known for his warmth. Besides, changing course will add three months to the journey. Friends, please, listen to me. Those who came before us were shown the scriptures by Daniel, of course. And we have studied these scriptures. We've weighed them. We've found everything that there is to find. But we discovered faith. We followed a dazzling star for months. That takes faith. Yes, yes, that is faith, yes. But consider this, we are kingmakers. We have inherited the power to give authority and rule for generations, yes? Yes. And I believe that today, today, we have found the one whom I believe we will bow to. What child is this? To whom kingmakers bow? This changes everything. This child threatens Herod. Threatens all who worship power. Oh, no. We are not going to change our plans just because you have some uninformed notion. I had that... a vision. Go on. A dream. Last night. I thought it was just fatigue settling in. But now I know it was a warning to not return to Herod. You might have mentioned this a bit earlier, friend. You are right. This changes everything. Yes, this is Christ the King whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him love. The son of Mary. Christmas Eve is filled with anticipation. The night before Jesus was born may have seemed like any other night, but the world was about to change. Once the Son of God was born in Bethlehem, our world would never be the same. If I'm being completely honest, I don't generally like changing direction. This is true during the holidays and all year long. 
God doesn't need our permission to change our plans. Sometimes God changes our plans to accomplish something greater. William Chatterton Dix was no stranger to change. Born in Bristol, England, he was a manager for an insurance company in Glasgow until a change came. Before turning 30, Dix became very sick, had to stop working, and spent months fighting to survive. Near death, bedridden, and suffering from depression, William Chatterton Dix turned to the Bible. Taking a deep dive into the Word of God, Dix found his life changing direction. He grew healthier and experienced a personal revival, a spiritual renewal that inspired him to write dozens of published hymns throughout the rest of his life. It's believed that it was during his recovery in 1865 that Dix penned the poem, The Manger Throne, which gave birth to the Christmas carol, What Child Is This? What child is this, who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch are keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come peasant, king, to own him. The king of kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. While the wise men or magi likely visited Jesus sometime after his birth, perhaps when he was a toddler, we typically include their arrival and the gifts they brought as part of the Christmas story. Their long journey, their regal status, and their valuable gifts are often discussed. But as we wrap up our journey through Songs of the Savior on this Christmas Eve, we focus on how they embraced changing direction based on God's guiding light, the joy and fulfillment they experienced, and their willingness to take the longer way according to God's plan and purpose. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, where we read, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is this one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Would you bow your head with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we might have new life and the promise of eternal life through Jesus. I pray today in the name of Jesus, that we would be ready for changing direction wherever you guide us and whenever you call us. Lord, I pray that on this Christmas and every day, we would be devoted to shining your light in this generation for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are all followers. As Christians, we follow Jesus. The message of Jesus is revealed to us through the Bible, 
the divinely inspired and infallible Word of God. Psalm 119, 105 describes the Bible as a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. The Bible is our guiding light given to us by God, preserved throughout the generations and still reliable, still relevant, and still true after thousands of years of study and scrutiny. The Magi had a literal guiding light, which was a star, a new star that led them straight to the newborn king. In Matthew 2, 1 and 2, we read, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. There are many theories and legends surrounding the Magi. The truth is that we know very little about them for sure. We don't know their names. We don't know exactly where their journey originated. We don't know how they came to study the scriptures that led them on the long journey to see Jesus for themselves. We don't even know how many wise men there were. Though we tend to assume that there were three because of the number of gifts that were given, yet two men could have given three gifts, or ten men could have given three gifts. We don't even know what happened to them after they left Jesus. They were very important men, but Jesus is the star of their story. Perhaps the Lord Jesus became their guiding light after they gazed into his eyes and gave their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Sometimes the Lord guides us to move faster. Sometimes he compels us to go slower. Sometimes he signals us to turn. And sometimes he has a stop. Very seldom does God guide us to quit altogether. Though this is one of the most common things people claim that the Lord has told them to do. The Lord guides us according to his will. The Lord guides us for his glory. The Lord guides us forward throughout life until we reach him. Every step of the way, the Lord provides a guiding light that compels us to draw near to him. In Matthew 2, 9, we read, After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. The Magi stopped, but they didn't quit. Stopping was part of their mission. The fact that the star stopped suggests that the star was in motion. It wasn't a shooting star or an asteroid that only appears for an instant and vanishes. Some think it was a comet, but they don't tend to stop. As surely as God spoke the stars into existence, he gave this one a special purpose. Of all the stars in the sky, the Christmas star brings joy and fulfillment. In Matthew 2, 10 and 11, we read, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I don't know if the Christmas star is still shining in the night sky, or if its radiance was only seen briefly around the time that Jesus was born. But I know that the Magi's joy and fulfillment still remains for all who come to Jesus today. Jesus is God's gift to a world in need of a Savior. Jesus is God's gift to each of us. Jesus fulfills the promise of God, and Jesus brings joy to all who know Him as Lord. The Magi were overjoyed when they came to Jesus, but their mission wasn't complete upon arriving at the house. They had to see Him. They had to give the gifts they brought to Him. They had invested their time and talent in this journey, and they couldn't stop short of giving their treasure to the Lord. Joy and fulfillment go hand in hand for those who recognize how much God has given us. In Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, we read, When a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word, but must do everything he said. I believe the Magi made a decision to give gifts to the newborn king before they left home. Perhaps they calculated the value of their gifts and weighed whether they'd give it all when they arrived at the humble stable. 
But they were so filled with joy upon seeing Jesus that they fulfilled their commitment to the Lord with no strings attached. We must be careful when we make promises to God. That doesn't mean we shouldn't make promises, but we must be willing to keep our word to the one who always keeps his word to us. We must be careful not to shortchange God, but to be generous to the one who has literally given us everything. In Matthew 5, 33, Jesus said again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. The Magi came a long way to see Jesus and to give him gifts that would provide for his family. Jesus came a long way to be with us and give us freedom from sin and the promise of eternal life through his sacrifice on the cross. We may think that our journey is over when we arrive in the presence of Jesus. We may think we've done our part when we give our gifts to the Lord. We may think that the time, talent, and treasure we have already given somehow entitle us to sit back and demand that others give. We may want to take the easy route, the familiar route, the comfortable route, but God isn't finished with us yet. The last thing that we learn about the Magi is that God compelled them to make a difficult choice. After all they had done, now they would have to take the longer way. In Matthew 2.12, we read, And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. I believe this different route involves some inconvenience for the Magi. They had already undertaken a lengthy journey. It may have been months since they left home. They already knew where to rest, where to eat, and what to avoid on the route that brought them to Bethlehem. Would God literally send them the longer way when they were already tired? Inconveniences are not only part of life, but sometimes inconveniences are part of God's will for our lives. You won't see that as the subtitle of any best-selling books printed on any bumper stickers or getting very many likes on social media. But Jesus actually encourages his followers to embrace the opportunities that arise when we are inconvenienced. We must be prepared to take the longer way. In Matthew 5, 41 and 42, we read, If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. In the first century, Roman soldiers were permitted to force those around them to carry their heavy gear for up to one mile in the direction that the soldier was headed. It didn't matter where the person was headed or what they may have been carrying already. Just about anyone could be forced to set aside their own plans, put down their own belongings, and walk away from the people with them and carry whatever the soldier demanded for an entire mile. Then, they may have to run back to reclaim whatever they set aside and return to their business. As if this wasn't enough, Jesus tells us to volunteer to go even further. Sounds crazy, right? But when we're willing to go further, we tend to earn the ear of the one we walk beside. Our generosity and willingness to serve becomes a catapult for sharing the good news of Jesus and opening the door for change to occur. God doesn't just want for us to experience a change of mind. God wants to blow our minds and change our lives. Changing directions to accommodate God's plan and purpose may not always make sense, but following His will makes a difference, brings transformation. In Romans 12, 2, we read, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. When our minds are renewed, we are completely changed for the better. No matter how wise we may be, how much life experience we have, or what we have accomplished, we still have room to grow. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, or we'll slowly slip into conforming to the pattern of this world. 
Herod's scam might have fooled some, but the Magi were called wise men for a reason, which helped them pivot and left them changing direction more than once. Leaving the lives they knew, they followed God's guiding light right to Jesus, where they found joy and fulfillment in giving their time, talent, and treasure to the Lord, who gave them the strength to take the longer way to accomplish His will, good, pleasing, and perfect. At Christmas, we are reminded that Jesus is God with us, King of kings and Lord of lords, humble, loving, and accessible to you and me. If you've never received God's greatest gift of freedom and life through Jesus Christ, then perhaps it's time for you to change direction and have a change of heart that will forever change your life for the better. You can come to Jesus right now and be transformed. What child is this? He is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior and Lord. I like to say that choosing to follow Jesus is as easy as A, B, C. The letter A stands for admit that you've sinned and ask God to forgive your sin. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus already paid the price for your sin when he died on the cross. And the letter C stands for choose. And that's exactly what I'd like to invite you to do right now, to choose for yourself to follow Jesus. If you're ready to make that choice and take that first step in the right direction, then please bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this simple prayer with me. You can make it your own if you mean it. Dear Jesus, I know that you are good and I want you to be the Lord of my life. So I admit that I have sinned and I ask you to forgive my sin because I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross and you conquered death when you rose from the grave. And so I choose to follow you today and tomorrow and every day throughout my life's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, for taking away my sin, and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, please send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. As we sing the songs of the Savior in anticipation of Christmas morning, may we be ready to receive whatever the Lord has for us, even if it means changing direction, because the best is yet to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. There came wise men from the east saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. They saw the child and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh.
As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, it's fitting that we come to the Lord's table to receive communion together. If you need a moment to gather the communion elements, you're welcome to pause this video and resume playing once you've prepared the bread and cup. If you're not able to prepare communion elements at this time, you are welcome to continue with this video and invite the Holy Spirit to draw you into communion in your heart. On the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he shared a meal with those closest to him, and taking two common elements, bread and a cup, he gave thanks. Let's bow our heads in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for providing for our every need through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the price that has been paid so that we could have freedom from sin and receive the gift of eternal life. I pray today in the name of Jesus that as we receive these communion elements, you would knit our hearts more closely together so that we might shine the light even more brightly in this generation. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Taking the bread, Jesus said, This bread is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat, and each time you do, remember me. Let's receive the bread together. In the same way, after the meal, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take, drink, and each time you do, remember me. Let's receive the cup together. We're told that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. And that's the good news. Jesus is coming soon. If you've been blessed by our online services and would like to support the ministries and missions efforts of Radiant Life Church, you're welcome to visit our homepage at radiantlifelodi.com and click the donate link at the top of the homepage. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord through your generosity. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pues